Back in Omaha, South Carolina. Single runs in the first, second, third, fourth, and sixth innings. And in the field, a two-hit shutout being spun by Michael Roth. They're three outs away now from staving off elimination for the third time. And forcing another matchup with Clemson tomorrow. With the winner of that one moving on to the national championship final series. Best of three against the winner of bracket one, either UCLA and TCU. They'll decide bracket one tomorrow. By far the longest outing of his career. The previous long four and a third last season. In his last start. His long outing this year, three and a third against Bucknell in the regionals. This Jeff is, Schaus, the hitter, 0 for 3 tonight. This is really going to dampen his uh, appearances, innings per appearance. Popped up, one out. Yeah, you're right, because they talk about how he's a situational lefty. And entering tonight, I mean, here's how short his outings typically are. Entering tonight, Roth had appeared in 35 games this year and pitched 26 and a third innings total. So he had been averaging well under an inning per outing, and he might go the full nine tonight. Well, they're going to have to re they're going to have to redo their speech when they talk about him, because that really jumps up the the innings per outing. Given the circumstances, this is one of the most remarkable performances I can ever recall seeing here at the College World Series. I, I mean, really, all of us were expecting maybe two innings, and, and I know that the coaches were talking about, you know, maybe two or three. But really, you know, he hasn't been in any trouble at all the whole night. Kyle Parker, the batter. He's quickly in an 0-2 hole. Right now he's working on a two hitter. There have only been 13 games in College World Series history in which the pitcher's given up fewer hits than the two he's given up right. There have been two no hitters at the College World Series, and there hasn't been one since 1960 when Jim Wixon of Oklahoma State no hit North Carolina. Jim Erler of Texas no hit Tufts back in 1950. It's been a long time and there have been 11 one hitters. He's working on a two hitter and he's one out away from a complete game. Which would be just the fifth of the year for South Carolina. Well, again he comes over the top with those righties and this one he just turns over. Nice little slider coming on the outer half. And, and not overpowering and that's the thing that's been the most impressive is just really his control keeping Clemson off balance. You know nothing fancy just not easy to hit. <laughs> Trying to finish it against Brad Miller. Who's 0 for 3 with a strikeout and two ground outs. Only two hits for Clemson. Roth has walked only one. There's the third hit now. And the first by a left-handed hitter tonight as Miller takes one through the hole on the right side and Clemson clings to life in this one. Well, that's really the first positive swing you've seen from Clemson tonight from the left side of the plate. I mean, the rest of the night, he's just been eating them up inside. He's walked only one, and that's against the team that's generally a very patient hitting club. Clemson third in the nation in walks. They average five and a half walks per game. Only Florida State, New Mexico State have drawn more walks than these Clemson hitters. Roth has issued only one free pass. That was to Parker way back in the second. He's hit two batters, struck out three, He's made him put it in play. Almost all of it on the ground in the infield. And he's managed to cool off the hottest hitter on the planet, John Henson. Who's 0 for 3 tonight. Came in hitting 514 in nine NCAA tournament games this year. Runner takes off. It'll be defensive indifference. They paid no attention to Miller. He's in scoring position. And now Roth is one strike away from a complete game victory. In one of the most important games in South Carolina baseball history. 
The one two pitch oh. in the dirt. Ray Tanner indicated that Sam Dyson would likely be their starting pitcher tomorrow. He's a regular member of their starting rotation. Clemson has their ace Casey Harmon ready to come back tomorrow. 2-2 Two -two pitches struck him out. A fitting ending to a masterpiece spun by Michael Ross. Shockingly, he is our Capital One player of the game. His first career complete game. First time he's ever gone past four in the third innings. And this was his third appearance at the College World Series. They were hoping to get three innings out of him. He won a remarkable nine. Allowed just one run. And were it not for a pass ball, he would have had a shutout. Well, I thought we were going to vote on the player of the game. Did you want to rethink? <laughs> <Are> we... <laughs> Demand a recount. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Good job, Rock. Yeah, Mike. Rock the winner. Dominic Leone, the starter for Clemson, is the loser. 5 1 the final score. And these two teams will go at it again tomorrow. The winner will win the bracket and go on to the national championship series, and the loser will head home. We'll come back with more from Omaha right after this.